Let's go to Luke chapter 10 from verse 38. Luke 10 from verse 38. He said, Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard him heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, does thou not care that my sister had left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha. Everybody say, Martha, Martha. Can you visualize how Jesus was just like, how long is it going to take this sister to get this thing? Hallelujah. He said, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part we shall not be taken away from her. Hallelujah. He said, but one thing is needful. And Mary had chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Thou art worried, concerned, encumbered with many things. But there is only one thing that is needful. Amen. In other words, the things you do you understand? The Bible says that he came to Bethany and Martha received him into her house. Martha was only trying to be a good host. Amen. Wanted to be sure that you know everything is properly, you know, everything, the gravy, is that what they call that thing, that green thing they use for? The stew, everything was just right for Jesus. How many of us know that when she brought the food that Jesus ate? Or what do you think? Do you think when he brought to Jesus said that ah, I was teaching here you were cooking? No. Jesus was waiting for the food. Hallelujah. So it was a legitimate need. What she was attending to was legitimate. But there was a priority problem. Hallelujah. There was a priority problem. A lot of us that love the Lord in a 24-hour day. If we give one hour in a day, a lot of times, to God, we feel that we've done well. We actually congratulate ourselves. But we do every other thing. Cut the onions. Wash the car. Go to the mechanic. What's the right thing we do in Nigeria? Service the generator. All manner of things that were not planned. But I'm learning that sometimes when I when I see when I see the when I see the devil playing this game, I just shut him out and shut down. Because one thing is needful. There was this discipline that Mary. Do you know what it means? Mary was living in Martha's house. I don't know whether you understand. Do you understand? Mary was living in Martha's house. So under normal circumstances, it should have been Mary in the kitchen. And Martha, the older one, sitting with Jesus. But here was her big sister going about all of these things. And this young lady is sitting there at his feet. That is significant. Because she could have been sitting on a chair. But you see, the feet is the place of learning. Hallelujah. That's why he said, once you meet somebody, especially in a spiritual setting, and you cannot sit at the person's feet, you need to go to somewhere else. Because the seat is where learning is done. Paul says, I was brought up at the feet of Gamaliel. She sat there. Everything was against the culture. Everything was against convention. But she sat there. You know why? Because she understood that there was one thing that was needful. Hallelujah. It wasn't every day Jesus came to their house. 
Amen. One thing is needful. If we're titling this message, there are so many things we can title it, but just to give you the sharp title, let's call it uh, the Martha Complex. In John chapter 11, verse 5, Jesus, Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Maybe that order was because of their age. But one thing is obvious that Jesus loved Martha. They were friends. Hallelujah. So Jesus wasn't saying that Martha was a bad person. Jesus was just saying that, sister, there's something wrong with your priorities here. Hallelujah. I believe that Jesus, uh, if Martha was the owner of the house, Martha was most probably the reason Jesus Christ came there. I don't know whether you understand. Because you don't just bring a male friend to your older sister's house. Improperly. Do you understand me? So it was Martha that would typically bring Jesus to that house. So they were friends. But there was a level of intimacy I noticed the different times Jesus visited that house that he had with Mary that he didn't have with Martha. Martha was a friend. Hallelujah. Martha was... Martha would always cook for Jesus. Martha would make sure Jesus was comfortable. Martha probably thought their relationship was... Um, um, what was the word? Mutually beneficial relationship kind of thing. Because when Lazarus died in chapter 11 of the book of uh, John, and Jesus came, Martha came and said, Lord, she called him Lord. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. And you know, they went on to converse and all of that. He said, your brother will rise again. He said, yes, I know he will rise. And they said, no, me, I am the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. He that lives and believes in me, though we are dead, yet will he live. He that believes in me, though we are dead, Yet will he live, but he that lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? He says, yes, I know you are the Christ that will come into the earth. The Bible says when she said that, she went her way. She had a relationship with Jesus. She had a certain understanding of who he was, but there was something missing. There was, there was this connection about it that didn't just... She didn't, well, I, I, I get the impression that Martha did not press into that relationship the way Mary did. That was why there were certain revelations of Jesus that Mary had that Martha did not have. Hallelujah to Jesus. That's Luke chapter 10. If we look at verse 40 again in the New Living Translation, let me show you something. But Martha, NLT, but Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. Women, can you relate? If you're a sister, you can relate to that. Can I see your hand? Let me see your hand now. If you can relate to distraction from the word of God from cooking dinner. Okay. Praise God. He said she was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus, listen to this, and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? There is something, there is something that tells me, if we, if we take this translation. So Mary was sitting down, the Lord was teaching her, obviously, all right, and Martha comes from the kitchen and says, Does it seem fair to you that my sister just sits here? Amen. So that's why I said the relationship, um, uh, Martha's understanding of what Jesus was, was or uh, who Jesus was, excuse me, was faulty. Praise the Lord, because to her. What Mary was doing was just sitting there. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. Say so she just sits here. And do you know that attitude? It's almost like you are just here wasting time. 
when you should be helping me with something more important. I said something about her attitude. Remember that Martha was no stranger to Jesus. Hallelujah. Indeed, Martha was Jesus' friend. So what I'm talking about is not somebody that is far away from the Lord, that doesn't have a relationship, that is not a church person. You can be a church person and still be distant from the Lord. You can be a church person and you still don't have value for the things that are really important. Look, you can serve the Lord, but still, the thing that is really the thing he wants to hand to you, hand to you, you are not just, you are not connected to it. Hallelujah. She was serving. Martha had a habit of serving God. Serving Jesus, in this case. In John chapter 12. Let's read from verse 1. John chapter 12 from verse 1. Six days before the Passover. See, Jesus was close to these guys. Six days. This was the week that Jesus Christ was killed. Jesus knew he was going to be killed. In fact, Jesus was in this vicinity of Jerusalem because Bethany was just two miles from Jerusalem. Jesus was in this vicinity to fulfill prophecy and this prophecy was the prophecy of his crucifixion. And at the beginning of that week, Jesus goes to Martha's house again. And the Bible says, Jesus arrived in Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the man he had raised from the dead. No, let's go back to King James, please. There, they made him supper, and Martha did what? Again. Martha could cook for Africa. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Martha served. That was Martha for you. Do you want more stew? Ah, no, take it. It's really tasty. Trust me. Just try it. Try. You know, that's Martha for you. Martha served. Lazarus was one of them that sat with him at the table. Let's go and please. Then took Mary. There's something this young lady knew that Martha didn't know. <laughs> then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly. Very costly. And anointed the feet of Jesus. Now let me Give us a background to this. Now, now in that culture, if a guest came to your house, a welcome guest, because uh, the region of Palestine was dusty, you know, a servant will come and wash the feet of this guest. Then you will take some oil or some, or some perfume. This was your way of saying you are welcome in this place. This was your way of showing hospitality. And you would dab it on the person's head. That's why Jesus asked that Pharisee, I came into your house, my head did, you did not anoint with oil. Hallelujah. So you would dab it. So what she was just doing here, she took something that was normal and she took it to the next level. Hallelujah. Very costly, the Bible says, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair and the Bible says, and the house was filled with the fragrance of it. Now, <laughs> again, Martha was serving. This wasn't, in the, the first, the only time that was referenced, that we read, Jesus came. This wasn't um, a dinner. This wasn't, I don't understand. This wasn't like a huge dinner as such. 
this one was a special kind of thing. This was a celebration, a celebration, um, a celebration dinner or luncheon or banquet or whatever. Because what led to this particular one was because Lazarus was raised from the dead. So they were throwing a party in honor of Jesus. Now, because a lot of us, including me, are Yorubas, you know how parties are. It's not a small thing. That street was closed. You know what I'm saying? Because somebody was raised from the dead and the person is sitting there on the table. I don't know whether you understand. They didn't say the man rose from the dead, but the doctors are checking him out at FMC. No, he was sitting there. This man, the people that buried him, we are sitting. Do you understand what I'm saying? So people came there out of curiosity. People came there, it cannot be true. I need to go and see. There were all manner of people from the regions of Bethany in the house. And Martha was under pressure. You know the perfect host. She was trying, are you okay? How are you doing? Please check with that the Lord. Do you understand? She was all over the place, sweating, using her apron clean. Do you understand? And here comes Mary. In the midst of this serious thing going on, all this girl could think of was to go and carry this uh, box of spikenard. And the Bible says she came, she broke it, and she poured it on his feet, not on his head. With the cost of that ointment, if she had put a dab on his head, that would have been honor. But she didn't even dare. She broke it and she poured it on his feet. There were different reactions, a whole spectrum of reactions. Because what she did, culturally speaking, was improper. Economically speaking, it was wasteful. But she did it. This lady came, a Jewish girl, most likely a single girl, a virgin. She came and let her head down in public in the presence of men that was not done she didn't stop there she used the hair and began to clean poured oil and began to use her hair to wipe the feet of Jesus that was worship and devotion that made no sense in a cultural context and you saw the reactions that followed in John chapter 12 from verse 4 talking about that thing then said one of his disciples Judas Iscariot Simon's son we should betray him why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Now, that pence, that is denarii. That was the currency or coin they used those days. And one denarii was the wage, the daily wage of a working man. So what we are looking at here, if you remove the holidays, remove the festivals, remove all the times they need to travel to Shiloh, all of those things, this was a year's wage. Now there's something about this spike nerd, because of its cost, it was one of the ways that people saved their money in those days. So if you wanted to save money, one, because it was very expensive what that meant that if you had a small bottle of it it was a lot of money so it was an easy portable way of saving your money so you could actually be carrying five million say in your pockets so instead of carrying all that money you just as it were compress it into that and just carry it around hallelujah so this as it were whatever it was that mary did for a living this was a year's saving, so to speak. Her sister probably knew about it. So Judas Iscariot 
So look, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Let's just read on quickly so that I don't. This is said not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bare what was put therein. But let's stop there. Judas Iscariot, the thief, was not the only person that said that. He wasn't the only person that felt so. Let's go to, let's go, the same um, rendition. Let's go, let the same um, um, story. Let's go to Matthew chapter 26. Let's read from verse 7. There came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had what? Indignation, saying, to what purpose is this waste? Now, there is a debate whether this was the same story or a different story. But what I want to bring out there is the attitude of the disciples to things like that. This one was poured on his head. Mary's one was poured on his feet. So you can imagine it wasn't only Judas that had a problem with that. The disciples, maybe they didn't voice it, but the disciples had a problem with it. Hallelujah. Notice what they said. To what purpose is this waste? So what that means simply is that both Judas Iscariot and the disciples, they had an idea, they had a sense of a more important use for that thing than wasting it. That's, that's, the, that's the word they used. Than wasting it on Jesus. Hello. These things that are written, they are written for our learning. Let's go back to where we are reading in John chapter 12. Verse 5. Say, so should have been sold and given to the poor. Let's see what Jesus said. This is said, okay, we've read this. Let's go on. Then said Jesus, let her or leave her alone. Against the day of my burying, had she kept this. Next verse. For the poor, everybody say always. The poor always you have with you, but me you have not always. They had a better idea of what to use. That oil with its value should have been put to. The brothers and sisters, this was what Mary gave to Jesus. It's called worship. Amen. All the calculation that we are doing, she wasn't involved in any of that. What she did didn't come out of a place of common sense. It came out of a place of deep devotion. Mary had a revelation of who Jesus Christ was that the, that the rest of them did not have. This is so important. Because you see, you and I can go through the motions. But let's face it, how? Why would a young woman, a young woman that is living with her sister, have a better revelation, a better understanding of whom Jesus Christ is than the disciples that he... That he than the disciples that he recruited for the purpose of teaching them who he was. I don't know whether you understand me. The truth, I don't know. Because in chapter 16 of Matthew, they go to Caesarea Philippi and Jesus began to ask them, Who do men say that I am? I say, Well, some say you are John the Baptist, some say you are Elijah, some say you are just one of the prophets. He said, But who do you say that I am? Do we know what is called chorus answer? What I expected was a chorus answer. Because everybody knew the answer. I was surprised that nobody said anything. They were looking at him. And then Peter says, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And then he said to him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. 
So you can be in the proximity of grace, in the proximity of the anointing. You can be positionally, everybody expects you, can expect you, excuse me, to have certain insights, yet you are completely at sea. You have no clue what's going on. Hallelujah. And that will show in your attitude to the things of God. Hello? That will show in your attitude to the things of God. People that know who God is, their worship typically doesn't make sense. Because they worship from a place of revelation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 